Welcome to our good program. We're thankful that you've tuned in. We have a lot of great truths that you need to know, and one of them is the most important one, and I pray that each of you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that's why I'm here, for you to learn the Word of God and obey it. And he says to worship, to be given to God alone. And then in Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 4, He's the only person that you can worship. Isaiah 44, 1, uh, 44, 6, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Matthew 4, 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He is deity. He created all things, all the stars. He knows all their names. And he, it's amazing. He created the sun and the moon and the stars. He created each of us. We, we could do nothing without Him. Matthew 4.10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. This is deity. He's the only person that has all of the answers for everything that we need. Worship, you see His glory being manifested. Psalm 29.4, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Psalm 29, 1 through 11. He's mentioned 18 times in Psalm 29. And then John 1, 1. When everything which has begun began, the Word was. Alone it did not begin. The Word was already. He's the living Word. He's the foundation of the universe. It's luminous. It is the Word. Man's true resource is in God. That's the reason I'm here to tell you that you must receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior right now before the great tribulation that I've been teaching you about. And I want you to know Him and nothing else. It's not religion and it's not denominations. And then he says, the foundation of the universe is luminous. His name is the Word of God. As the Word express image of God, that is, he makes God visible. You see, he lives in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Temple is in us. He lives through us. And that's how you learn. That's how I have lived. Revelation 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. You can't be saved apart from the Word of God. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee for all of this world. And the ones that don't know Thee is the reason we are here to give out this living Word so they can have the beautiful places that He has prepared for us in heaven. Pure gold is what our mansions are. And we're thanking Thee and praising Thee that today you can receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty and all that's in the heaven and the earth is His and Thou art exalted as head above all. All riches and honor come from Thee and we praise Thy marvelous name. I want you to get your Bible out or get your hands and a paper and a pen and write these, all of these living words are for you and they are all for each of us to live by them. Thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. We're praying for 100-fold, and we're rejoicing for victory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
So since you know we have been studying about the last days, the great tribulation, seven years of total, total sinful, all deception and all lies and all apostasy, nothing of the Word of God. Because if you don't know this, you have to learn it. Because in Revelation 14, the ones that are saved since Pentecost, we are going to be raptured in Revelation 4. We're going to be taken up into heaven. And now this is something that you must understand because very few people even know what this is because they have never heard it. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ, by his own blood, Christ entered in once into the holy place. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Everything he has, he gives to us. So as you, he's waiting on us to come to heaven. And he, he says, come up hither. And all of us that are left. Now we have our spirit and soul in heaven if we don't have the time that he has given to us for our bodies to go back to dust, just the spirit and soul. That's why you have to know the spirit of God. And here we are going up to heaven, getting a body of light, the greatest gift in the world. And he's there waiting for us. Every person has to know these promises. And this is why we need to know Christ as our Savior. And I give this to you every week almost because I want you to know this is God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. You don't have a spirit until you're born again. And that's what you can't go to heaven unless you have accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And all that he gives us is in this book. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Their, just their bodies have gone to heaven. So you see, it has to be what the word of God says and not what man says. And this is why I'm giving you these lessons. The vile judgments, Revelation 1 through 16 and 21, the judgments during the last half of the great tribulation. It is the time of the completion of the wrath of God. Those seven years, Satan is deceiving everybody right now, and he's preparing you for that time. And this is why the three judgments in sets of seven, the seven seals, chapters four and five of Revelation, the seven trumpets, Revelation eight, one through six, you have to read these and I have to repeat them because they're difficult to know that it's all the wrath of God. That's what the great tribulation is. This is, now listen what he says in Revelation eight, one through six. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now we're in heaven. None of this is happening to us, but listen, it's going to happen to you. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne see i pray for a hundredfold every day for over 40 years and it's not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance this is what we understand is the word of god and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Verse 5, now this is Revelation 8, verse 5. 
And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had prepared the seven trumpets prepared them to sound. This is the way that you understand. And now I'm going to read verse 7. I didn't give that to you. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire with blood. These are going to happen to you. There's nothing unless you know Christ and are gone to heaven before this. And if you don't know Christ, they're going to kill you. That's what it is all about. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Now, I want you to know that these lessons have touched my life more than anything else. And I have served him for over 40 years for the glory of God and not for money. And now it is breaking my heart to think that anyone would have to go through all of this when you can go to heaven right now. Just accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And then in chapter 15, these are the things that's going to happen, so I have to give them to you. Chapter 15, this is the most amazing thing in the world. And it says, five, this is 15, 1 through 8. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. That's all it is. And today we have our Heavenly Father that never, ever does anything for us but the very best. Everything He gives us is eternal. And all of these promises on this book is ours. All you have to do is to pray. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. God is protecting us with the sea of glass. All the people that are there See, it says in this lesson, now I have to give that to you because this is something that everybody has to understand that is the greatest thing for us is to know that we are going to be in heaven. And this is the answer that he gives to us. And the sixth angel poured out the vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water there was dried up that the way of the king of the east might be prepared. You see, when we know the Word of God and live it, it is all we need in these last days. So, in chapter 12, he says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is children also. And nothing more breaks my heart to think a child is, he says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. That is my prayer. It every day to pray to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And this is what we need. And then when we see this, Chapter 16 is the saddest story in the world, and it's difficult to give it out. But he says in chapter 16, 13 and 14, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you have to read it because it says in chapter 1 through 12, and listen what he says. I have to give that to you. Verse 10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and the his kingdom was full of darkness. You're going to be in hell. Christ takes us into heaven with its greatest blessings in the world, the greatest victory in the world. The, all it, this, think about today. We don't have, we're not going to take one thing in our home that we have with us to heaven. And he has mansions for us, pure gold. 
And you have to read and understand. Here we bow down to him when we go to heaven. And he has gifts for us. If you just pray for me, you're going to get a gift. He's, we're going to give our crowns back to him when we obey his word. And this is what I'm praying for. And then we see in chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. Now listen at this. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. See, they're all evil. There's nothing in any time in the great tribulation where there's anyone there but those that have never accepted Christ, and then they kill them if they don't take the 666. For they are the spirits of devils. See why I'm so burdened and wanting you to know these? Working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You see, we need to know what these are so we can not ever have to go into that time. That's what this is all about. And now in these last days, the end time could come at any moment. So this is another Bible verse I have to give you. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You see, oh, what this book is all about. I wish I could give you the life that he has given me, the abundant life every day, and the greatest blessings given out the Word of God for over 40 years. And those of you that want to hear, you can get me on YouTube, Betty Davis. Mrs. Davis is my name for all the people that I teach. And then the greatest thing is that you can learn and give them out to another person. You're to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So he says, the sign in heaven, this is the greatest thing in the world. This is, we ought to know that heaven is absolutely perfect and hell is the blackness of darkness forever with fire and brimstone. And I, God didn't make that for people. He made it for the devil and his angels. So I'm giving these to you because my heart loves you. Christ loves you. He died instead of you. And I'm here because I love you. So we see all of these wonderful truths that he's given to us. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Now listen to this. Do you not know that the saints, when we go to heaven, are going to judge? We're going to judge the world. That is 1 Corinthians 6, 2. And this, when you know these, the best thing in life is to study these and know what God is doing for you. And if you don't know, these are the times to learn and to turn to Christ and your children. If your children know Christ and you don't know them, then you're never going to see them again after you leave this life. So I'm here for you because being mangled with fire judgment for our God is the consuming fire. This is what we need to know. And I'm going to read these to you because they are important. Second Thessalonians. I, there's so many things that I have to repeat because they're so wonderful. I don't want you to miss out on anything that he wants you to know. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 through 10. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I want to read the whole thing to you. But he says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. We're to love each other. He that loveth not knoweth not God, so that we ourselves glory in you, the church of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Everything we have is perfect. He gives us everything. And if you don't pray, you don't have anything. So that we ourselves glory in you. What, 
which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that we may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. This is something that people need to understand. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. You're to never be troubled. You're to in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on those that know not God, for that, oh, that obey not the those that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You see, that's why I'm here. And then when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. And that's why I know that God is giving me 100 fold when I give this out because that has been my prayer for 40 years. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. And God loves you and I love you. And I'm going to give these until I go to heaven. I'm 86 and that, that could be any day. So in Second Peter 3, 2 Peter 3. Now these are the things that is going to happen. None of everything in this book is only true. Every word is true. So let's see what he says in 2 Peter 3, 7. And if I forget to tell you, I'll repeat them. So this is important. 7, verse 7. But the heaven and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition and ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years one day. The Lord is not slack concerning the promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering. He's waiting on everybody to be saved. That's why we haven't got the great tribulation yet but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. He loves you with an everlasting love, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to, this is a most amazing thing, to repentance. Get on your knees today and praise God for saving you. And it takes his blood now. He, you have his blood in you. Now listen at this, verse 10. And the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All the earth is going to be burned up because he has defiled the whole, whole world with his sin. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You see, this is something that people have never heard before seeing that, that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We are to live an obedient life. We don't live like the world. You are to be virgins. Every person is to be a virgin. That's what we were taught from the beginning when we were going to school, taking we had to take Bible in the grade school and in high school, and we had the best life of anybody in the world. Philippians 1.21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. This is what we have. And then he says in Revelation chapter 12, you see, when you read these, it touches your heart, and you have tears for all those that don't know these. Revelation, it is amazing, 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. You see how the love of God has taught me how to serve thee and how to give these out. The martyred saints are singing and will be fulfilled by Scripture 
as each of these tell us, all nations shall worship Christ rather than the Antichrist. So as we turn to these and get to all of these lessons, it's going to touch your heart and you will never be the same. And here he says, the seven vials, Revelation 14, 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You see, you're never to have alcohol in your body and you're never to smoke and put anything into your body that is not according to the word of God. So let's see these promises that he's given to us. Isaiah is, the, Isaiah is even telling us what we're supposed to be doing. And this is the Old Testament, and it is the best book in the Old Testament almost. Listen at what Isaiah 66, 16 and 17. It is such a blessing. 16 and 17, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together saith the Lord. This is such a sad time. And listen, it, this is Isaiah 66, 23. And it shall come to pass that from the new moon to another and from the one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. You cannot worship anybody but Christ. This is the most important thing. And then Isaiah Chapter 2 is a, just a great, all of these. You have to read the Word of God every day. He gives us 14 hours all day long, sends the sunshine and the rain, and we can see the moon and the stars. And chapter 2 of Isaiah, this is right here, 2 and 4. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Now, this is the last days, and it could happen to before tonight that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. That's what the Word of God does. It teaches us about him. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now listen at verse 4. Now this is Isaiah 2, 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You see what we do? We're to love each other and pray for them every day. This is what he gives to us to do today. I want you to understand this. I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. This should be everybody's life today. And then we think of how to get to heaven here. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Romans 3.23, nobody is different than anybody, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're the same. We're all created by him. And he loves us all the same. And greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Thank you for hearing and answering these prayers. I thank God for every one of them. And all of you that need Christ have received him today.